and he is saying that he looked Lo Alam stood on Mount Zion and with him an hundred and four forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads these are they which are not defiled so he will gather out of his kingdom those that offend, those who defy, right? Mm -hmm. We read that in scriptures. But these are left. They are referred to as virgins. Let's expand on that a little. Virgins we are familiar with. If we look in Matthew 25, we see ten virgins. Ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. And so we may look at that in general terms and say, okay, ten virgins, five wise, five foolish, and don't give it any, any deep thoughts. We just say, okay. It means sinners and saints. That's fair enough. Let's look into it a little closer. When Christ called a people virgins, it's regarding a woman, right? Yes. A woman. Um, <clears throat> A woman in, in prophecy, Jeremiah 6, verse 4. You want to read that? Let's make sure. Jeremiah 6, woman, verse 4. Oh, woman in prophecy means church, symbolizes church. And it reads, Jeremiah 6, verse 4. I've lightened the daughter of the... To a comedy and delicate room. There my six. Where are you? A five left. Girl on six. <coughs> six verse four. That's nothing. Prepare ye war against her. There my six is two. It's a verse two. Jeremiah 6, verse 2. Read it, yes. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 16. I have lightened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Jeremiah 6, 2. I have lightened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. <coughs> if we were to go to Revelation 17, Or Revelation 12, we would see a woman who was about to give birth. She was about to give birth. And we know by reading that scripture that the son was Christ. The man-child was Christ. Right? Yes, and she brought forth a man <coughs> child. Right. Through, and this was referring, this has put us back into the Jewish church and representing the woman to which Christ came. That's what he is saying. So that woman was clothed with the sun, the word of God, the moon under her feet. The reflection of the Word of God. Mm. Um, so we could look on her as a virtuous, as a chaste woman, right? Not a whore or not a vile woman. If we look in Revelation chapter 17, we'll see a vile woman. So the Bible likens church, false church and is true church, woman and so there we have it 
when Christ referred to the virgins, he's referring to those who are of the spurious doctrines, the doctrines of a vile woman or the doctrine of Babylon, confusion. So when he refers to the 144,000, we know, and we'll get to that, where they were sealed from Israel, 12 tribes. So what he's saying, and we'll go to that, but I'm just clinching the point of virgins right now. If we compare these first fruits, they were redeemed from among men, and they were first fruits unto God. God is still telling us about what this particular harvest will bring about. After the tears are taken out, the wheat are called virgins, are likened to virgins, meaning they profess a pure doctrine. The fact that there were foolish ones among the virgins it is telling us that God's church at this time possesses both wheat and tears, but they are of the true church. They are of God's church. So those who are foolish are not prepared to go along with what is being revealed. They don't, they have some, they have a particular truth, but the truth goes further. So they are not careful to have oil in their vessel. Remember, they are virgin so they can't be found in Babylon. They can't be found as daughters of the, har the, the, the harlot, mm. the vile woman, the whore, the vile woman. The Bible is plain. And so he's helping us to narrow down to what he's saying clearly he start the church and his truth will extend to his coming. And he came not to destroy the law or the prophets. So we have to look at what the prophets, even before Christ came, have written. Because Christ didn't inter interfere with them. He didn't destroy them. He didn't put them out of commission, out of action. And if a prophecy was written 4,000 years ago and was not fulfilled, it must be fulfilled and especially fulfilled in the latter days. Because most of the prophets, when they wrote, they are more directly prophesying about the latter days. And so when the prophet wrote that the virgins are the first fruits, some are wise, some are foolish, they are found in God's true church with the true doctrine. That's what makes them virgins. Let me repeat that. What makes the ten virgins virgins is the fact that they are found in God's church with the pure truth, the unadulterated truth at this time. But some are foolish. So we don't have to run about with generalities. We know directly God is speaking about His church with the truth that He has revealed through His prophets up to today. Seventh-day Adventist, the church with the spirit of prophecy, the church with the pure, unadulterated truth, the church 
in which to be found, the movement in which to be found the ten virgins and in which, from which the tears will be separated and the wheat, the one for the four thousand virgins, first fruits, will be left. Bring us, build a scaffold and get around that. Mm -hmm. One for four thousand are first fruit saints. They are harvested from the field. And the field is the SDA movement. Christ object lesson. Page 72. Mm -hmm. Revelation 7, 1 to 4. Go ahead. And after these things, Revelation 7, 1-4, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any, on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to her, the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Seal of the living God. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. This is not high-flown theory. This is real. This is about to happen. This is the result of the harvest. Mm -hmm. First fruits starts in the church. Um, Nine Testimonies 164 tells us, read it for us, read it with us. That is Nine Testimonies, Volume 9, 164. Remember the testimonies to the church. God specifically have provided his prophets to the church, they have written because God's method is to deal with his church and then he deals with the world. But at the same time, yes, he has people who are bringing people to Christ and he acknowledges that. Right? But he has a mission for his church. And a message to, under, to be understood. Nine Testimonies, again, 164. Write it down. Volume 9 of the Testimonies to the Church, 164. Three. In order to be purified and to remain pure, <clears throat> Seventh-day Adventists must have the Holy Spirit in their hearts and in their homes. The Lord has given me light that when the Israel of today humble themselves before him and cleanse the soul temple from all defilement, he will hear their prayers in behalf of the sick and will bless in the use of his remedies for disease. That's what we need today. The Lord has given me light that the Israel of today. The Lord has given me light that's God's prophet speaking. Christ did not come to destroy his prophet. And the, the parables are links. All of them are links in the chain of truth. Any truth you have that cannot be connected, that is not seen in the chain, connected from the beginning of man's redemption to the end, then you can know that that, is not a link in the chain of truth. But the spirit of prophecy is clearly in Daniel and the Revelation. The word of God cannot be tampered with. Don't listen to people. God is bigger than man's little idea. <laughs> what is man? What is man? What is like man? grass. That faded. Faded. What is 
but it's man. God's word stands. <laughs> A man's breath is in his nostrils. A man's breath is in his nostrils. His dust, dust, until God breathed into him, mm. became a living soul. So man is bigging up himself and yes. licking his chest Eating like his chest, like um, King Kong. King Kong, yes. <laughs> King Kong. What grey back or white back? <laughs> man is nothing. Christ <laughs> tells us he did not come. To destroy the prophets. He has come to fulfill them so he's not interfering with what he has revealed through the inspired, he has inspired his prophets to write. Mm -hmm. And this prophecy of, is included in volume 9 and page 164 that the Lord has given me light that the Israel of today humble themselves. So this is clearly telling us who is the Israel today. Christ has not disbanded Israel. No. Uh, uh, recommend you to our study of Hosea chapter 1-2. And we will do it again <coughs> and show you that God, where they were not my people, where they were, they, they were <coughs> he disbanded them, scattered them. He will bring them back together in our time, the same Israel. I mean, not the same people per se, but their descendants. He will, he's dealing with Israel right now the same way. He has not discarded Israel. And he said the Israel of today, those who are found with the truth unadulterated of God, when they humble themselves before him and cleanse their soul temple from all the fire, he will hear their prayers on behalf of the sick, Blessing the use of remedies for diseases. Israel of today. Sink that in for a moment. <clears throat> and please go back to the previous videos. Let's put them up on Facebook or YouTube wherever they be. <coughs> Please share the world because we don't want to skirt around this until it's too late. You are not popular now, but you will be preparing the way of the Lord. God's people will prepare the way for God's church, Latter-day Church, last day of movement, will be preparing the way of the King of Kings. those among us who reject his message will have to be a goner and then his church fears the moon, clears the sun conquering it's an army God has army He's making, putting his generals in place right now. He will have an army. Sorry for the break. -in. War. In the war. Life's war. 
one day up in heaven and be a beautiful beautiful
fool us as to the end of the world and the finishing of the gospel work. Aren't you glad? About hope, hope, sweet hope, hope, When you know the truth of the kingdom, don't stress yourself. Just relax in the word of God's truth. Walking on streets of gold. It starts here. Let the kingdom of God in you. No corona. Sit on under your old fig tree. Manda Karma. Oh, God will surround his kingdom. Does his presence. Try to yes. steal your joy. The devil will try to steal your message because he has no message. All he has is mystery. But he's trying to fill 
Satan's take over, Satan takes over the world. Oh, 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 oh sweet home. And God starts our home right here. Tell someone. Oh, 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 oh sweet home. You're afraid to own your home on earth in God's church. afraid to defend you and before the mercy seat remember Christ is before the mercy seat in the holy of holies and he's pleading his blood on our behalf he's saying my blood my blood my blood father my blood because he's leaving it up to us to choose choose hope Think about the fact that God distinctly, distinctly told us through his prophets that he is about to separate the wheat, the tares from the wheat. Mm -hmm. Think about that subject. It's not a game. It is real. Yes, it doesn't make for fancy sermons. It doesn't make for popular sermon. It doesn't make for a feel-good sermon. But God is not in the business of making us feeling good in sin. God is not in the business of preaching to us feel good sermon because he knows what Satan's plan is more than us and so it behoves us to take keynote of what God is about to do now in our time is separate purify his church in order for them to prepare the way for his coming, for them to invite others who are sincere and who will join the banner of Prince Emmanuel, lift up Christ in the latter days to prepare the way for, for the coming king. He is coming. But the church is instructing us how he will use us to prepare the way for his cup. As we continue, these 
end time prophecies. I trust you will take an interest if you have not yet done that. Take an interest in God's present truth. It's not popular. Many will shrug it away. Many will dismiss you. But it's for you to take a stand on God's side, even now. And first thing that I will ask you to do is study what you have been given. Because unless we study, unless we eat, make use of what God has given us, then we have no space for more. And he will not waste his pearls on swine, as he said. This is another parable. Why take? the pearl and throw it to swines. He's just saying that there are those, as he said in this parable, to whom it has been it has not been given to know the mysteries of his kingdom. Christ is so kind, he's so gracious, he's so loving. And he wants us to choose. But he has pulled out every stop and made it possible for us to see clearly what to choose. He has not left us to fumble in the dark. And that's why he gives us everything and narrows it down to pinpoint exactly what he's saying. God bless you. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the love of God the Father, full fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide, remain with you. Be anointed, be blessed, be delivered. I <coughs> declare <coughs> the love of God and his healing hand on those who are sick. Comfort the bereaved families, and that will be in peace. As the peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. God bless you. Thank you. Share the videos. Come again. Mm -hmm.